fun trucks, like things that you would want to upgrade, I guess. And, uh, you know, electronics with the different things that you would do. Tuning issues. This is your favorite combo, SW4 and revolver. Yeah, yeah, I, I dig that combo. And then you can run various servos on it, you know. Gents calls this my uh, dollhouse because it's Velcro. <laughs> so if you guys have any questions, let us know. Uh, right now, my favorite servo to go to that I've started using is the is uh, what is this called? The X2 Shift Servo. Yeah, and Ryan makes a nice yep. servo. It's really strong. We tried it out. Worked really well. I have another one at the office. My other one favorite is the Tekken T1, I think T440. And then I have another one, which I think it's on the other trucks. It's the, uh, that's the Protec. Oh, Protec, yeah, 370s. Yeah, I like 370s. 370s are a good servo. I mean, if you go over a few of the, the different brands, the, the Highline brand, you know, you'd probably start with high tech, mm -hmm. which if you're in San Diego is local. So getting stuff warranty through them is, uh, you know, really easy. Uh, you just drop it off there in Mira Mesa. And then Tekken builds a really nice product. Their, their servos are uh, probably not as widespread as some of the other ones. Um, and then Shifts makes a great servo. Uh, Sobex is another brand. I'm always kind of back and forth about Sobex servos. You know, getting them warrantied can be a pain, and then I've heard other guys have had no trouble. Um, they're they're quite noisy. If you're running a revolver, I guess it doesn't matter because the motor's pretty noisy anyways. Uh, so a little bit of servo line is is no big deal. Um, but yeah, Sobex like this truck here. I mean, I don't drive this truck super hard. I just made it to be a nice K5, so I didn't feel the need to have a massive servo in it. This one's just run like a little 1230 Sabox in it that I had around. And it's been fine for that, for, for a lot of trail use. Yep. Yeah. That's why for a backup, that's what I use for the Yeah, yeah, trails. great for a backup or something like that. Yep. Um, yeah, but Protex, High Tech, uh, Futaba, Tekken, any of those servos, you know, servos are, you know, people always go, well, you know, I can get a an eBay servo, it's 35 kg. I mean, they're, they're okay on a budget, but you know, you're probably gonna break them. They're slow, they're kind of not very smooth. I mean, you, you get a nicely set up truck with a nice servo and and you'll spend the money on it every time. Yeah, and, and yeah, one of the things we do is we are out there almost two times a week at, at no, no, the very least, and we drive everything. And we go things that people always, the scale guys who will see what we crawl always go, you're you're not doing it right. You're wrecking trucks. We're busting. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I mean, Christine, yeah. uh, Krista can be there. She's on, she's on the uh, lead with us. Our feet are with us. You can see, she can test that uh, we do drive. I mean, I got some show queens right now, but eventually they do rotate into the service. And when they do, we beat on them. I mean, yeah, they unfortunately, roll. I mean, when usually when you go out with me, I mean, yeah, you know, my version of a trail is like what most version people's version of full on rock crawling yeah. is. I mean, I tend to build cars that are look scale, but I want the performance too. So there's a fine line. I, I don't necessarily quite build comp rigs. Comp rigs are outright performance and then scale looks are secondary. I like to build to a theme. And hey Scott, how you work. doing? You're on board, I see you guys. And you can tell this is uh, Chris Whitehorn in front of him. I decided that I was gonna show him I could drive and it rolled, it tumbled first day out, but it's built for what it's for. It's, you gotta go out and have some fun. You can always paint another body. Yeah, you, yeah, bodies. Yeah, you can see, look at the bodies, you know, we have so many here. I mean, the blazer body, I've, I've kind of been a little easy on it, just because I, I, I think the way it looks. But yeah, I've, I've uh, laid it outside a couple of times. It's got some scuffs and bumpers. Yeah, all the, all the Chevys, unfortunately, they're a little bit square, so they're what I call a wheelie on the refrigerator. Exactly. Which, you know, speaking of servos, when you've got a square truck and it wants to get pinched on things, having a good servo, that's the difference between running all day and yeah. and burning that thing up and, you know, being a junk, you know. Well, as you said, they, we all started somewhere. We all tried with those 20 kg, 25 kg. Yeah, that 25 kg, you know. They're okay. I mean, but when you really do every day in, day out, 
these servos last. I mean, these servos yeah. perform. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the biggest thing on any crawl, you want to be able to go out there and have fun. You don't want to worry about your servo falling off or breaking. And that's one of the things that James and I and all of our friends that we crawl together, we know what we use and we know what works. And we try to, we definitely make sure they're bulletproof to make sure we go out and have fun. We never, theoretically, we never have to carry our trucks out. Yeah, I hate carrying the thing that, I mean, <laughs> they get heavy. I, I do have a JLU back there that's that's been weighed at 12 pounds. So, uh, you know, you definitely don't want to carry that thing around. And, you know, as your truck grows in weight, as you're trying to get more performance out of it, the servo is definitely going to be key to whether or not that thing survives the day, you know, running. Uh, you know, another thing too is, you know, when you look at the budgets of servos, your ESC and speed controller and those sorts of things also play into the performance of your servo. So we were talking to a guy today who, who said, you know, I, I put a really big servo in my truck, but then, you know, sometimes it shuts off. Uh, I said, well, that's, that's called browning. So, you know, when you look at factory DECs, especially on a stock ready to run ESC, most of them are around 5.5 volts. Some of the newer ones are getting six volts now. And six volts is adequate enough to run most servos, but when you get into the high-end servos or big, torque servos you know they'll they'll tap that and your truck will shut off so even putting just an external BEC like a castle BEC that's adjustable and wiring it in on your ready to run truck will save you a lot of hassle yep so guys about that uh, the airplanes and helicopters oh, we do live in San Diego we are in the flight path so uh, unfortunately that's what happens yeah you there. might get a little bit of uh, we're next to the hood. We're on the outskirts here. <laughs> this is this is the real world. So if you hear any ambulance or police vehicles, we're gonna run. <laughs> gunshots don't scare us. It's the cops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the gunshots. That's just some dudes taking care of business. But the cops, they mean otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the things that you know what we do is what we, we all start out right. The biggest thing we always start. And for me, what I've learned is that no matter if it's an RTR or a kit, you know, first thing important a servo. The next part. The triumphs, motors, batteries, but the one thing that I always look for are tires and wheels. As you can see, mm. most of these have my favorite 2.2 wheels and on 4.75 tires, which is my favorite. James says one of these days is going to completely convert me. There's a couple <laughs> of trucks here that are converted, but I haven't gotten there yet. But um, I mean, I'll tell you, look. I mean, I ran 2.2 wheels with one nine tires for a very long time on one of my trucks. But it also took a lot of tuning to really make it work really well. If you do like the big wheel look, it's a way to go. Just know that when it comes down to brass tacks, if somebody's got a really good 1.9 setup, they're probably going to have a problem with your truck. Yep. You know, it doesn't yep. matter what tire you got on it. It just it changes the dynamic of how the wheel sits You know, with the tire combination. You do get that ballooning effect, which kind of changes the side hill effects. There's you, know, you stretch the tire, the foam is harder to tune in a 2.219 setup. But yeah, for the most part, if you're just running trails and stuff, ah, you'll never, you'll never notice uh, a real performance gain. But when you get into you know, really technical rock crawling, then that's when the proper wheel and tire combination put together. Yeah, you know, and that's like people always ask me, what foam should I run in my truck? And I'm like, there's no clear answer to that. You know, you do the research on what you think, what foam might work in your vehicle for the different weight range and suspensions, and then it sucks. Buy a few sets of foams and change them out until you get the right result, you know. And, you know, go and run your truck at the same place every time so Repetition. you get a baseline yep. of what performance you're getting. Because if you just keep changing things and you change locations, then you'll you'll never know that you've made a positive change so go to your favorite haunt and all it takes is a few lines you know good lines you know memorable paths that stay consistent and then you can you know put in the work to unmount all the wheels and tires i know with like the vanquish wheels are really nice they're pretty easy to change out a set of foams on because they assemble really well some of the other wheels yeah they can be a pain in the butt yeah well um yeah 
bigger tires, like 5.8s, yeah, Chris, so that's a pretty big tire. Yeah, Scott, we do have small tires. There are times that James calls us out and says, it's time for some small tires. Yeah, yeah, we go over. for the scale trucks, the tiny tire <laughs> trucks. I don't go the super tiny tire trucks. I usually go, like, class one. It's about as small as I want to go. 4.19s, exactly. Yeah, yeah, 4.19. Yeah. I do have a couple 155 rigs. Yeah. Still with the tallest 155 I can get in it. Uh yeah. When, one of the things, if you guys want to check out what we do, James has his own uh, YouTube uh, page, and uh, he goes and shows when we go out and we do outings. He has videos of us crawling around, the little stuff. You know, one of the biggest things that then we know is sometimes you get in the crawl and you don't want to take photographs and stuff. You just go, but ah, yeah, James yeah. loves the videos and yeah. helps it gets out, gives a little sh uh, highlights of what we do. But typically, we're out there for forty five minutes, two hours, and when I say hours, I mean it is hours. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, there's a lot of times we're out there all day, even uh, weekends. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. You know, that's the things that, you know, in different areas require different parts, you know, tires. We tire, we trust a lot of tires. You look here, I have Voodoo, I have uh, Generals. What do you have on that one over there? You have uh, These are the stock Generals that yeah. come on the Element. Yeah, yeah. the Elements Enduro. And Mine, the, the bow tie? Yeah, same one. thing here on the blue bow tie. And yeah. these are... You know, they're a great looking tire as far as something that looks more mild and still performs really well. Uh, the Proline Truxxas tire is another great tire. Yep. Uh, we did a blazer for a friend of ours, D, and we used those on that. And it, it looks really right. We kept it fairly narrow on a, you know, a AR44 style axle. And uh, yeah, it looks really good. I mean, it looks like a blazer that's got a really mild lift with like a 33 inch tire. Whereas this is a little bit taller, you know, it's probably comparable to a six inch lift on a 35, mm -hmm. maybe even a, a tiny bit bigger. Yeah. At least with the Traxxas bodies, they're, the, the one nice thing with the bigger tires is the body is bigger. So you can really get that scale effect of not being something that's on 40 inch tires. Um, you know, the, the Axial Blazer body does a great job of that too. The the BFG you have on this one is- Yeah, it's uh, perfect. Pretty good scale. Yeah, pretty good scale. You know, this is probably like, you know, in real life, uh, a, a four to six inch lift on a 35, you know. And it is 1.19 tires. Yeah, this one is, this one is <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> my preferred. Yeah, and the all is a great looking tire. The, the compound on these weren't the greatest uh, for like really heavy rock crawling, but uh, for just running trails, yeah, the all is a great way to go. And it's it's a licensed tire. I'm a bit of a tire snob, like as far as licensing goes. So the Voodoo's perform really well, but then if you're trying to get that scale look, you're, you're kind of missing the punch there. The Trencher is, the new Trencher, that's one of my favorite tires that's on the market right now. They, out of the box, they perform really, really well. They're, you know, not as aggressive looking at first compared to, you know, like the Crawler, which is a big chunky tire. They're a little bit, little bit shorter, but the performance gain out of them is, is awesome. It's a really good tire. It's got a lot of forward biting edges. We've had them in all kinds of stuff. Yep. Really grippy stuff, sandy, hard pack stuff. And they, they, they mow through. Same what, thing with the little element tire, the, the stock general tires. Yep, they perform right well. I mean, like CDM with the Mickey Thompson RC four wheel drive tires worked well. Not yeah, great, yeah, but they worked yeah. well. But wait. Yeah, I ran the MTZs on a truck for a long time when they first came out, and those are the soft compounds mm -hmm. too. The RC four wheel drive compound is like, you know, a little hit or miss. Um, some of the other brands like Voodoo and Proline, even the Proline uh, compounds, I think. The Predator compound is good and it has its places, but a lot of times it's a little too soft. Yeah. G8s are a great all sweet around. spot all around. Yeah, and when you get them worked in, they work really, really, really good. The Predators, you're you're going to be replacing tires pretty often if you're running it hard. One of the things I wanted to bring up, guys, uh, we're not team drivers here. We're not sponsored. Everything you see here is out of our own pocket. We pay for everything. So. One of the things that you're you're worse, not sportsmen, so I guess we're just uh, we can yeah, lawyers. Yeah, we're, we're uh, in, <laughs> enthusiasts. Yes, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so we we pay for all this stuff. So none of this stuff came for free for anybody comps. You know, no one's sponsor us telling to you know give pointers. This is just stuff that we use and parts that I like to use. And obviously, you guys know I'm a bow tie fan, so that's why most of my bodies are bow tie for here. 
I have another one that's missing, but um, I drive Jeeps. I have plenty of Vanquish trucks that I drive all the time. I have a six by, I have Capras, I have a Super Cooper Capra. So, you know, there's no no true body that's better than others. It's just come to personal taste. With everything else, it's just a chassis underneath that's been yeah. tuned by the right people. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm primarily a Toyota guy, but I dig old Chevys, so I do like to have, well, I had a, a Blazer I got from you not too long ago that I did a lease spring conversion on it. It would have been a nice truck to keep in the stable, but I tend to do stupid stuff with cars, so and it, it had enough ability to be fun. But there was a guy in LA that really, really wanted it. We had done the RC four wheel drive chassis with the leaf springs and uh, actually changed out to the kit axles, uh, which is something you have to do. And yep. um, I don't know if RC four wheel drive really addressed that when, you know, it'd be a great conversion for these, but you have to replace the axles and everything to yeah. get that early look. Even if you did something like I did here, where I didn't even use a Traxxas truck, I only used the Traxxas body. Yep. And then you could do that same thing and have leaf springs under it and really get that scale look with some adequate performance for for what it is. You know, leaf springs you never you never get that slinky articulation out of it. But. Oh, exactly. And that's where I think the other part is that the RC four wheel drive Blazer is also a shorter chassis, right? Shorter yeah. So base. if you look at the RC four wheel drive Blazer itself, it's a shorter chassis. It's a hard body, even though you get all the details out of it. And if you're going for just that absolute scale look, those, there's some really nice build down out there. Um, yeah, I think the, the Traxxas Blazer for being Lexan is, is one of the nicer bodies out there. So you get that fine line of, uh, of performance versus the look. Uh, Proline used to do a Blazer that was a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I, I remember, uh, let's see, it was probably, 2007 or 2008 there was a couple of guys on youtube that were out of texas which i still talk to one of the guys but they were building some amazing little blazers off of that pro line blazer body and it, you know it, it very akin to this just larger so they were running really really tiny one nines to get the look and this was before all the tires before even flat irons or anything came out you know, with the 4.19, so, yep. but those guys were building awesome stuff. That was some inspiration back then to see those blazers. You know, I'd, I'd always had a soft spot for, uh, for K5s, especially. Yep. That's when I wanted to go build this one. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to build a nice little K5. So what do you think about my scale lug that's in bolts that I used to use? Nah, for the dollhouse stuff, it's fine. If you're going to drive it, don't put it on there. And you're, how many you're, times? Gonna, you're gonna rip it all off. It's you're never gonna get it tight enough to hold anything. Scale hardware looks amazing, but from the performance aspect, you know, if you're just running trails and doing some videos or that sort of thing, yeah, it looks yeah. great. But I if can, you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna push it. Well, we had, I did a six by with OMFs with all scale bolts and <laughs> the uh, first outing first few rocks I, I told it, you that was a bad exactly. idea exactly the bolts <laughs> the bolts on the outer ring actually came out and because i was hitting rocks actually snapped off and bent over i said okay oh yeah 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 <laughs> so that was funny that was pretty funny i mean this first first night time out i was like okay so what did i do i had to take out every single screw out and put it back to stack the stock bolts <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of work on on the six by six it's a, two yeah. more wheels than normal <laughs> exactly but you know, there's still like this truck, you know, we're running the, the RC four wheel drive uh, beadlocks on here and these have a great scale look, the, those RC four wheel drive rally wheels. Yep. I know when you brought this over, it had some boggers on it, which <laughs> I always, I always uh, whined on you about. The boggers have their place, but you know, to, to make a bogger look great, it's gotta be like that Monster huge truck. pro line bogger and things need to be cut and there needs to be you know, exhaust stacks coming out of the hood and it's just got to look nasty and yeah, there's a better ways to go. Yep. I always akin this truck. We, we haven't done the graphics yet, no. but uh, you know, this might date me a little, but uh, remember John Baker from yep. Chips had same blue step side truck with the silver stripes on the side and the rally wheels. And yep. I think that's where a lot of the inspiration for this one came with building old John Baker's step side Chevy and this one you know this is 
This truck is equipped nice. You know, you've yeah. got a good servo and everything. This is an element. Yep. But yeah, again, you don't want to cheap out on that servo. You, nope. you can do it cheap, but just know the limits of where the performance is at, you know. And if you buy the 25 kg servo, just know you're probably not going to get a warranty when it burns up. But, you yep. know, they're only 20 bucks. So, you know, that's the two trains of thought. They're like, well, I could, I could buy like six of these for with that one servo cost, but it's gonna work fine for, for the trail running. But as soon as you yep. start pushing in the rocks, that that 25 kg servo is gonna show its Achilles heel. Yep, yep, so. All right, well, we just wanna do a quick one. Um, we just wanna say hi to everybody and do a quick video and show you what I have. I mean, I have, I think, um, somewhere between six and seven, maybe eight bow tie crawlers. And this is all I could fit in the back seat of the truck to get here. <laughs> But, uh, we're probably going to have to add a, a Chevy Camaro to that <laughs> lot with the new low C drag car. Exactly. I mean, I'll get rid of my Dodge. I'll get rid of the Dodge one that I have. Yeah, get a there you go. Exactly. I mean, I'm surprised you haven't put a Nova body on that thing yet. No, not yet. No. Yeah, yeah. I it's still in the box, uh, wrapped. It's still in the box, wrapped. <laughs> it's darn, you know, it's, what is it, Mopar or no car around exactly. here? Or what? I don't exactly. know. Those things aren't licensed, but yeah, yeah that new... Uh, the new low C drag car. Uh, I mean, the not exactly excited about the way the body bolts together. Yeah. I would have liked to see no bolts on the side. Yeah. But yeah, pretty cool body. '69 Chevy, and then you have a couple of the Red Cats, mm -hmm. the the little uh, low riders, which we've done some work on around here. Exactly. Doing lights and stereos and yeah. Gotta have everything. I mean, not even bow tie slash. Yeah, bow tie <laughs> slash. Yeah, yeah. So. Even though it's bow tie crawlers, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, well, guys, I just want to give you a, a rundown of what I had. You know, um, James is uh, definitely a good friend. I've known him for a number of years, and anytime I need something, he's been the guy that I go to to help tune stuff. I mean, I have other friends that help me do things, but sometimes James knows how I drive. He knows how to tune my stuff, or knows when to slap me and say, "Look, it's your tires, it's your wheels. We need to change <laughs> something out." You know, these ones are these are used for trails right now. You know, when I go crawling, it's my, you know, it's my full on, you know, my pro, my gladiators or yeah. something else. I mean, or my other element that I have that's uh, built that you guys don't see all the time, but it's my T100, what I call it. It goes anywhere. It's a trend. I go through gears because my throttle. I've even comped it. Yeah. <laughs> I even comped it. But uh, it's all about the finger control. And yeah. The, the driver mod. The, the driver, driver mod. mod. Exactly. It's all in the finger. <laughs> so thanks guys for joining. All right. Thanks guys. Hope everybody uh, was enjoyable and uh, we'll be around. If you have any other questions, we'll answer them um, later on. Thank you. Thanks, guys.